Good morning, welcome to Bishop's Court here in Salford. We're about two miles north of Manchester city centre, at the heart of one of the largest urban conurbations and most diverse places in the United Kingdom. Our worship today is a service of Holy Communion for Palm Sunday, the day that leads us into Holy Week, in which we journey with Jesus Christ to his crucifixion and resurrection. Our Bible passages will be led by the Venerable Karen Lund, the Archdeacon of Manchester, and our intercessions by Lucy Hargraves, who is a member of St Peter's Church Halliwell in Bolton. We've each recorded the different elements of our service in our own homes. My wife Sue, who is a self-supporting priest in a local parish, will assist me here in the little chapel that forms part of our house. It can hold about 12 people physically, but via the internet, there's no limit to how many of us can join in worshipping God. Our opening hymn describes the events of the very first Palm Sunday, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem and the crowds came out to greet him. Ride on, ride on, in majesty. Ride on, ride on. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as a Messiah to suffer and to die, let these crosses be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, 
the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven living in me, gentle Saviour, closest friend. beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people answered as a whole, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head, after mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. 
He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus again crowed with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. This is the passion of the Lord. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey and the crowds come out and greet him. Do you remember crowds? It may be only a matter of weeks, but it seems a long time ago now since we were last able to gather together in churches at sporting events or in cinemas, clubs and theatres. Some of my most formative memories of growing up are of being part of a crowd and watching my birthplace non-league football club Mosley in a Wembley Cup final. We lost. Well, recently I took strength and courage from the packed cathedral that greeted me when I came home to Manchester in 2013 to take up the role as its bishop. But if I had to select one crowd, the crowd I have needed most to be part of, that would be the crowd I addressed in a packed Manchester city centre three years ago. On a warm spring evening, we gathered in thousands to share our grief and commit ourselves to love one another. We did so drawn together by a terrorist attack the previous night that had snatched 22 lives from our midst and maimed hundreds more. That crowd, witnessed by so many on TV across the world, changed the way in which cities and nations respond to atrocities and changed it for the better. Crowds matter. And in this time of social or more accurately physical distancing, the ways in which we can come together matter even more. It wasn't only our health workers who took strength from that recent evening when so many emerged from their front doors to offer a round of applause. Each might only have been able to see or hear at most a handful of others, but everyone knew that this was something huge, a mighty crowd. Some of our present crowds are even more invisible. Few who saw it will forget the image of Pope Francis praying alone on a dais in the centre of St Peter's Square in Rome. No other human figure is visible. And yet he was as much at the centre of a crowd as if the square had been as full as it would be in normal times. Crowds don't have to be in the same place to connect. In this last couple of weeks, many of us have learned how to be part of a church congregation over the internet. I'm deeply aware of how much it means to many Christians to see the face of a known priest or minister leading them in their prayers, preaching a sermon in familiar tones. Even whilst we're not all able to partake physically of Holy Communion, we can receive the spiritual benefits from watching online. For those without IT devices, the daily and weekly services on radio and TV are providing strength and sustenance. Yes, we can and should pray and read our Bibles individually, but there's something extra about knowing we're among many. We're discovering that crowds don't even need to gather at the same time, I hope that you followed how to make a palm cross. If I can do it, it requires no special dexterity or skill. Make a cross, even if it has to be as simple as two strips of paper stuck together at right angles. Put it in your window whenever you have the time to do it. I know that you're part of a mighty company of fellow Christians as we begin the commemoration of Holy Week and Easter together. The largest crowd the Bible tells us Jesus addressed was no greater than a few thousand people. Not bad for days when each would have had to listen individually to his voice. And yet those who heard passed on the message to others. Evangelists set down his words in their Gospels to form what became known as the Sermon on the Mount. We're not told how many lined the streets of Jerusalem waving palm branches that Sunday morning. But when we hear or read the account of that day, as we've done in this act of worship, part of that self-same crowd, separated by thousands of miles and almost 20 centuries, but one in crying Hosanna. Crowds, visible or virtual, are made of human beings and are subject to the faults and weaknesses of humanity. From the crowds pictured at Hitler's rallies, to the crowd that shouted for Jesus to be crucified on Good Friday, they can all too easily be manipulated by dark forces. There may be times when we have to stand apart from the crowd or to criticise its actions. Mob rule is not good rule. Yet the desire and need to gather is part of our God-given humanity, not to be avoided, but to be done well. Even if at present, that means done at a distance. One dark, wet and cold winter's night, sometime around 1982, I'd opened up the church I was helping at during my studying days so that... In the absence of our vicar, the visiting priest could lead our service of Holy Communion. We usually had a handful turn up, but that night, nobody came. 
I was deeply apologetic at having dragged him across Birmingham for a wasted journey. I suggested it might be best to cancel so he could go home out of the bad weather. He insisted we carry on. Never forget, David, he said. It isn't just you and me at the Lord's table tonight. We're surrounded by angels, archangels, and the whole company of heaven. And so we were. And so are each of us now, wherever we are today, whenever we're watching or listening to this service. Hosanna to the King of Kings. Amen. Let us pray. In this time of global uncertainty, I am drawn to scripture from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Loving Father, I lift to you all those who are feeling isolated and lonely within our communities. May they know your love and peace at this uncertain time. I pray for a new sense of community like no other. May you give us love to strengthen relationships with our neighbours. Also for those struggling with the new family dynamics, may you give them patience and perseverance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, I pray for those in hospitals who are suffering from the virus. Please heal them. I pray for quick recoveries, renewed strength and hope in you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, I pray that you will be a source of comfort to those who are grieving loved ones at this time. Bring them your peace and remind them of your loving nature and presence. Psalm 46 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I also pray for those families who may be worried about loved ones, who may be elderly, frail and vulnerable. Remind them of your peace and give them a sense of hope during this uncertain period. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, I lift to you all those who are more vulnerable and at higher risk. Protect them and calm their anxieties. Give them your peace that passes all understanding and renew their minds so that their thoughts can be fixed on you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, I thank you for those who are returning to the NHS to support the existing workers. I pray you will bless them, protect those workers in the hospitals and also the other key workers who are putting themselves at risk. May they stay healthy and know that you're in control. May you give them strength and resilience during this busy and difficult time. I also pray that you'll provide more resources so that the staff can remain safe and protected in the hospitals. I pray for the researchers who are developing better tests to diagnose the virus and create vaccines to prevent it. Please give them resilience and perseverance to keep going and provide a swift breakthrough. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, I pray that you'll be with the leaders who are making decisions that affect families, communities and the country. Provide them with wisdom and clarity to make the right decisions. I also pray that they will choose to invest in long-term solutions to prepare for any future outbreaks. I pray for the new hospitals currently being built, that they'll be ready and resourced quickly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, I thank you that you have called your people for such a time as this. Continue to equip us daily to deal with the difficult circumstances we find ourselves in. May we all lean on you and receive your peace that surpasses all understanding. Guard our hearts and mind in your name. Amen. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Jesus, true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live, let us share your death and passion. Make us perfect in your love. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks, because for our salvation he was obedient even to death on a cross. The tree of shame was made the tree of glory, and where life was lost, their life has been restored. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I accept our praise as Heavenly Father through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. But in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, remember now his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And as we look for the coming of his kingdom, we make with this bread and this cup the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Holy Spirit and nourish us with the body and blood of Christ, that we may grow into his likeness and become a living temple to your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join us, if you can, in saying together the more traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive, receive you, but only, only say the word, and I, I shall be healed.
You humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. May the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only Son bring you by faith to his eternal life. Amen. May Christ, who accept the cup of sacrifice in obedience of the Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of the cross. Amen. May the Spirit who strengthens us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your mind on life and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us here in the Diocese of Manchester this morning. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.